Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again today. I suspect this will turn into a lengthy video, but the topic is very important, especially if you're considering performing the differential fluid change on your XK8. I'll structure this video in the following way. First, we'll start with a brief introduction where we'll discuss if and why you may want to do this service to begin with. Then we'll dive into the three most common approaches in order to get the job done. For the first approach, I'm going to use images and discuss it from a theoretical perspective, which may seem a bit dry, but it is still valuable because it will inform us better once we move on to the second and third approach. The second and third approach I will demonstrate and film directly on my vehicle. The topic of changing the differential fluid on the XK8 can be seen as somewhat controversial. There are many opinions on whether this service should be performed and if it is to be performed, which method is best to follow. It's hard to say definitively what is right and wrong here. It's one of these situations where you have to soak up the available information for yourself and make a decision in terms of what works best for your particular situation. This is what I can hopefully enable you to do with the information that I'm going to present in this video. Why do I say that the topic can be controversial? According to Jaguar, the differential of the X gate is sealed for life. The fluid, which is poured inside the differential at the factory, is meant to last for the life of the vehicle. It does not require servicing. Now, if you take this claim word for word, you can conclude that hey, I don't need to touch this, Jaguar engineered this fluid in a way that no servicing is required. I can sleep well at night and I don't need to bother with this at all. Now, I know that many people think this way and this may in fact be accurate for the majority of us owners out there, meaning we may indeed not have a problem ever, even if we leave the original fluid inside the differential. The way I approach this is to examine the two main factors that contribute to the differential fluid deterioration, or the deterioration of any rub lubricant for that matter. The first factor is age. The second factor is kilometers driven and the driving conditions. For example, high mileage, mainly driven on the highway, or low mileage, but let's say racing the car around the track every weekend. This second factor is essentially a mute point because every fluid has a shelf life. The original differential fluid has now been in our cars anywhere from 18 years to 28 years, depending on what model year your vehicle is. That's a lot of years and I don't know of any fluid especially fluid originally engineered in the 90s to have a shelf life of 20 plus years. So just from this perspective alone, I think it's fair to say that the fluid does need to be changed. The fluid's ability to protect the gears inside the differential must have deteriorated. And essentially, I would like to go ahead and perform a service which Jaguar never meant to be performed on this vehicle. This is where the difficulty comes in, because the design and the engineering do not accommodate for serviceability. But more on this in a moment. So if we are to do this, what are the options? There are three main approaches that you could follow in order to get this done. They vary greatly in terms of complexity, as well as their pros and cons. Let's start by examining the most complex approach, which would probably only apply to a very small minority of owners, but it is still worth talking about in relative detail. Then we'll continue on to the other two options, which are more popular and more commonly followed when performing this service. For this most complicated approach, I will use a couple of images shared with the online community by our fellow members, David and Kevin. Now, when you see the pictures, I think you agree that both David and Kevin have executed to the highest level of excellence and the results are absolutely eye-watering. 
my hat is off to them for going above and beyond and achieving this spectacular result. So what's this complex approach? Well, basically, it involves dropping the entire rear subframe assembly. Now, I know this sounds scary, but it is actually not so bad. Let's explore further. And here it is, the entire rear subframe assembly completely taken out of the vehicle. Now, the differential is right here in the middle, and you can notice these vertical silver metal fins, which help with heat dissipation. They face towards the trunk, they face towards the back of the vehicle. Let's take a look at another picture here. It's another assembly, uh, meaning from another vehicle. This is the rear part of it, this faces the trunk, and this faces the front of the car. Now, if we explore a bit closer here, you would probably notice, let me zoom back in, right here on top, we have the differential breather. I have a separate video on the differential breather in terms of what its function is, how to clean it, how to access it, how to service it, and so on. I am pointing it out here because once we know where that is, you can see that the fill plug for the differential fluid is sort of vertically down underneath it. There is no drain plug on the differential. This is the only access, the, the, the fill plug. So essentially, it is this opening that we need to vacuum out the existing fluid and then through the same opening we would be filling in the new fluid. Now, something that I would like you to pay attention to here um, is how could we possibly access this fill hole if we are under the car? Right, so if we're not taking the entire assembly out and we're under the vehicle, how can we access this hole? There are two ways to do this. The first is to go sort of this way and this way. So you need to clear, um, you need to clear the sway bar. You need to clear this metal part of the frame and you also need to clear this black flat bottom of the whole assembly so you go behind that 90 degrees you have access to the hole this is one way which is looks simple here on the picture but once we're under the car um, you'll see the difficulties the other way is to approach it in a similar way to how we reached the differential breather. You can reach by going through here. So in front of the blue sway bar and underneath this piece and then coming down. So that's the other option. Before we get our hands dirty, let's very briefly talk about the tools that we're going to need. Now, the differential fill plug is a square profile with a size of half an inch. So your extension at the front needs to be half an inch size. The length of the extension is five inches. Uh, right here. So you need a ratchet with a five inch extension. This is for method number one, for the easier way to access the plug. The problem is that that easier way is not available for all vehicles so this may not work for you if it does this is great it's really easy to do it this way but if this doesn't work we have a backup plan the next uh, sort of plan b tooling is the following you need a wrench and a wrench like this would not work this is 10 inches long that's way too short you need at least the length of it needs to be at least, I would say, 16 inches 
or long. Now the head, you want it to be articulating and you want it to be ratcheting. So you want this sort of mechanism where once you connect, you don't have to remove this anymore. You just ratchet, 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 and so on, right? Uh, so you want this mechanism, you want articulating head, and you want the profile to be as thin as possible. Okay, really, like the thinner, the better. With this wrench, you need a three inch <coughs> extension, three. And then the question is, how do you connect these two together? For that, you can use one of these adapters. Now I've put some tape here to um, make, make it a bit tighter so it doesn't fall off. But the idea is this, you have an adapter. This is basically this matches the extension. There it is, right? And the adapter goes on to the wrench like so, it just goes in. So I, I don't want this falling off. That's why I put the tape so that it's a tighter fit. But you have the adapter mounted to the wrench and now the extension goes on. Here's the thing. If this is one piece as you see it, it will not work. The clearance is so tight that you literally need those two components to be separate. Otherwise, you cannot get them in where you need them. If this is one solid piece, it will not sneak through. You will see what I mean uh, once we're under the vehicle and we start uh, going through the process. All right, we're under the Jag. If you're still with me this far in the video, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now, let's orient ourselves. This is the rear right wheel of the vehicle. This is the link for the sway bar. And if we look here, right in the middle of the screen, all the way back there, this is the differential breather cap, which we cleaned and maintained in detail in the other video. There it is. Okay, let's zoom out. Zoom out again. Okay, now to access the differential fill plug, we're going to move further to the middle. Here you can see those fins, heat dissipating uh, vertical fins that are at the back of the differential. And the fill plug is at the bottom right of that area of that cover. Now, let me get another light in here. You'll see this Jaguar lettering. There it is. We're now exactly in the middle of the vehicle. This is right in the middle. And this is where we'll look through to spot the fill plug. It is right there. Let me zoom in. There it is. There it is. That's it. So let me zoom out a bit and zoom out a bit more. From the middle of the vehicle, you can see it. Now, let's talk about the difficulties when it comes to accessing it. There are two factors that increase the complexity when it comes to accessing the differential fill plug. The first is the presence of these metal rods, which act as braces to reinforce the rigidity of the body of the vehicle. Uh, they are present on the convertibles and not present on the coupes. So if, if you have a coupe, you don't need to worry about that. The second and more impactful and consequential item is the presence of this metal plate right here. It's a plate which is welded onto the trunk area, the bottom of the trunk. This is where the spare wheel resides. So this plate is welded on here. It cannot be removed. And the presence of, of both of these items 
makes access to the plug from here difficult. Now, if you did not have, if you have a coupe, for example, you would not have the bracing and you would not have the plate. In that case, you could get your wrench with a five inch extension, you can get up there over the sway bar, go forward, reach the plug and just loosen it, right? You can literally put your whole hand through here and access the plug. There is enough space. Uh, it's relatively, I, I, I would consider that easy access. So coupes, you're more or less set with this access method. For convertibles, where you have the bracing and the plate present, we have to think of a more, um, should we say, artistic way to reach the plug. Let's explore that now. All right, step number one. Get your three inch extension. And the idea is that we will connect the extension onto the plug just by itself. That's goal number one. In order to do that, we're going to go through here the same route that we took when reaching for the differential breather. So my hand is moving above the sway bar, goes forward, slides between the exhaust and this um, metal piece from the subframe. So I'm going through here. Then my hand turns. And I have to go over, see this curved piece of the subframe? I have to go over it in a sense that I have to be between that and the trunk of the vehicle. Once I do that, I will turn the extension towards the differential and I will move towards the plug. Now you can see that through here, there is the plug and there is the extension. So I need to turn it accordingly and then push it in. That's it. Now it's in. The extension is now connected. You can see it from here. Right there, you can see the end of it. There it is. For step number two, we're going to take our low profile, long wrench, and we're going to slide it between the sway bar and the plate, and we'll direct it towards the extension, like so. And we'll be able to connect right there in the middle of the screen. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. Oops, right there. We'll be able to connect. Of course, we're going to do that with the other end of the wrench. Now, the problem is that when I try to do this, even though this is a very low profile, there's not enough space to get this through. Now, I tried doing this as well, and then sliding this through, but even here, right here, there doesn't seem to be enough clearance for the wrench to pass. And I don't want to force it. I may be able to do it if I force it, but I don't want to push it. So the way to accomplish what we need is to separate this, take them apart with the left hand, get the wrench through. And then with the right hand, with the right hand, hold the adapter and through here, reattach the adapter and the wrench together in this space. I hope that makes sense. Let me do that because I'll need both hands to accomplish it. I have to stop the video. Let me do that and uh, we'll continue. All right. We're in, 
you can see that the adapter is reattached to the wrench and now we can go forward and we'll need to get this in right there you see that now because this is a wobble sort of um, it's a variable geometry head I can't press in <clears throat> I will have to hold the wrench in this position with my left hand and with my right hand again through the right side through here reach in and press this onto the extension so that they can connect let me do that and i'll start the video again okay connection made and i hope you can see how the wrench and the extension are connected right there there we go we have good connection from the extension onto the wrench now what this allows us to do is essentially to use about this much space here left and right to start untightening right untighten click untighten click untighten click and little by little loosen that plug and get it out to do that i have to uh, wrench with my left hand and with the right hand through here i will have to hold on to uh, the 90 degree connection here and, and sort of keep pressing inwards while i'm loosening the plug so that uh, this connection doesn't come apart I hope that makes sense. So right now I'm basically in position and ready to start loosening the differential fill plug. And the last approach I would like to discuss uh, here from underneath the car is the following. Instead of taking your three inch extension and placing that into the fill uh, plug, instead of doing the three inch, take your adapter and place the adapter directly with no extension prior to it. Um, now, if you don't have the adapter, there's a way to uh, get the same uh, result with just a square profile uh, metal rod. I'll place a, an image here on the screen uh, from jagrepair.com where this method uh, is described. But you need either the adapter or uh, sort of the steel profile, uh, square profile uh, metal rod, one inch length, you would place that into the hole, now into the plug. Now, doing that is a bit challenging compared to the three inch extension, just because it's, it's harder to hold this and sort of manipulate it with your hands, but you would go, as before, you would go through here, through the right, with one hand, with the other hand, you will need to help yourself uh, through here. So you would uh, go with, with, with your other hand through here and kind of just with the tips of your fingers help. Um, so with the left hand is going to be helping the right hand um, to get this adapter into place. Now, let me uh, do that. Let me put this in and then we'll go from there. Now, the adapter is in place. I hope you can see it from here. Right there, it's inside the plug. I'll get the phone through as well. There we go. Okay. So the adapter is in. And now, how does that help us? Well, the Jaguar sign, we're not going to go through here anymore. We're going to go through here, through this tiny little gap. And let me get you in through here. Do you see it? There it is. That's the fill plug and the adapter inside it. Now, what this allows you to do through this tiny slot is to get your tool in. But, unfortunately, my long 16 inch 
wrench that we used before even though it's very low profile will not fit through here so this is not an option i have to go with a regular wrench which is open-ended on one side in fact the, this side would also not go through but the open-ended side would go through and now when it does let's take a look through here and try to there it is do you see that see the wrench showing up boom connection made so now i have the wrench i hope this is clear the wrench is holding onto the adapter and what i would do here i'll have to drop the phone but with the right hand so see how i'm holding this is my left hand i'm holding the wrench with my left hand i'll continue doing that Let me just get it out and while i'm holding the wrench with my left hand with the right hand i would go through here and put my fingers sort of press onto the adapter so the adapter doesn't come out of the plug and while i'm keeping the pressure with my right hand over here with the left hand i'll be loosening essentially the wrench goes through like that i'll be loosening the plug and there is sufficient level of movement here to loosen it so that is another option the bigger challenge here is that what you have onto the adapter there is the open end so you can only move a little bit then you have to take it out to reposition maybe turn it this way and so on um, compared to this mechanism where you know once you've made a connection it is just click 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 and uh, it, it's sort of faster and easier you don't have to reposition the tool but both ways would work if this is the approach you would like to take all right before we go any further a few important things to consider number one you probably noticed that the fill plug is quite dirty uh, it almost appears as if there's a slight leak from the plug itself and of course i would like to clean that before i take the plug out because once the plug is out, I will be um, putting in a hose to, uh, to vacuum out the differential fluid. I'll then be putting in another hose to fill with fresh fluid. So there will be traffic in and out through that hole. And if the area around it is dirty, some of that debris could be pushed inside the differential. Definitely not something that I want to have happen. So I have to clean uh, well around that plug, number one. Number two, once I get the plug out and all the service is done, I need to put that plug back in. And that part I'm not really looking forward to because while we can arrange this kind of mechanism to take the plug out, Starting to thread it back in without cross-threading it, sort of matching uh, the hole and the thread and starting it in accurately is a whole nother challenge. And I almost feel that that would be close to impossible to do from here. Um, I can get my hand onto the plug here. Like if, if there are no tools around, I can actually get my hand down to where the plug is and I can touch it. But it will be tough to thread it properly from this angle. Another, that's another thing to consider. So that's two so far. Number three, when I put the hose in, especially to uh, vacuum out the existing fluid, I want to be able to direct that hose properly all the way down to the very bottom of the differential I, I want to have sort of a good angle so that i can manipulate the hose move it left and right until it gets all the way to the very bottom to make sure that all the liquid is withdrawn it, it is sucked out 
again from here this may be hard to accomplish because the access to the plug to, uh, in the drain hole uh, in the fuel fuel hole is uh, very limited so that's another thing to consider um, in addition when i start the service i would like the car to be warm or at least the differential fluid to be warm which means i i would drive the car for a bit get the differential warm and only then start extracting the fluid so that the viscosity is a bit thinner um, and it's easier to suck it out now this means that if um, i drive the car and the car is all warm and the exhaust is all warm right um, I, I have to then come uh, back in the garage lift up the car which takes some time um, and once I start moving here and working, I risk touching the warm exhaust pipes. So another, that's another thing to consider uh, in terms of difficulty with this approach. And the last thing I would like to mention is periodically, let's say once every couple of years, I would like to be able to relatively easily check the differential fluid, both the level and potentially the color of the fluid, um, just out of curiosity, right? This preventative inspection. Again, if I am accessing that plug from here, um, I would have a challenge, or at least it, it would be a difficult process every time I want to do this. So with all of these um, additional sort of uh, factors in mind, I would like to go ahead and move on to the third and final approach which is suitable for accomplishing this task. That approach um, is in a way much more elegant and much smoother, and it does not involve you being under the car at all. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, I'm sitting comfortably here in the boot of the Jag, and we're going to focus on this back metal wall here because the last way to access uh, the differential fill plug is by drilling a hole through this wall through the other plate that is behind it the plate that we saw underneath the car so we'll be drilling a hole through here a hole through the plate and then the differential plug would be right behind and, and we'll have a clear unobstructed straight horizontal access to it now let's get a few things out of the way many of you may say look there's no way i'm doing this i'm not drilling any holes in the bodywork of my car um it, it's just this is not an option forget it um and i understand if you think that way uh, this was sort of my initial um thought process as well um, but here are a few arguments for doing it using this approach so for example one thing that you would end up with is essentially an access hatch um, in the right place uh, that will allow you all the benefits that we just spoke about in terms of if you want to check the level um, of the fluid that would be easy to do if you want to clean around the plug before you take it out that would be easy to do if you want to do this job again in a couple of years refresh the oil um, again, it would be easy to do. You don't even have to lift the car, right? There's a lot of benefits of ha having an access hatch here. In addition, think of it as you're, in essence, correcting an oversight or a mistake that Jag did at the factory where they themselves should have put an access hatch here um, so that the differential could be more easily serviced. Uh, they didn't do it. It's a sealed for life uh, sort of unit and, and, and the fluid is good for the life of the vehicle as we discussed. That's how they approached it. They should have put an access hatch here. That's my thinking. So if you do it now, you're just kind of correcting that mistake after the fact. Now, if you have seen uh, John's video from To The Garage channel, uh, he did a very detailed overview of his process of drilling a hole, accessing, changing the fluid, and so on. Um, there are another one or two videos on YouTube uh, sort of covering the same thing. However, I'm going to put a picture here on the screen actually comparing what you see here on my vehicle 
and what you see on those other vehicles. And you will notice one very major difference, and that is the box that I have, the electrical box here, looks completely different from, for example, John's uh, vehicle and the box that he has. Also, the wires are routed differently. So all of my wires leave to the right, whereas his wires, he has some going to the right, some going to the left and kind of curving around. This in a way looks cleaner, more streamlined layout. But the biggest problem is that his box is located almost right next to this surface, whereas my box is offset to the left. There is this gap here. And that is a problem because most, if not all, of the forums, guides, videos online that I have come across about how to do this process, the advice is the following. You take your two inch, um, where is it? Two inch hole saw, and you place it. This is my rubber uh, grommet that is ready to cover the hole after the drilling process. You place it as high up as possible to the edge. So you don't want to do something like this, uh, but something like this would work and to the right as possible until it kind of gets right next to the box here. So this would be the location if you follow most of the instructions online. The problem is that the location, this location of the hole is relative to the location of the box. And it appears that the location of the box is not a fixed thing, at least not for all model years. So you cannot go by the box. If you like, if I went ahead and made a hole here now, this will be way off. I would not be able to access the plug with a hole here. So I measured from underneath the vehicle and what I need are five inches from this surface here. So if we look at five inches, I am roughly somewhere here. This is the center of the plug, at least for my vehicle. You may want to recheck. Uh, for yourself, but if I place this here, yeah, yeah, that's about right, and then carry it through onto the wall and bring it up, you see that my hole would have to be sort of right underneath the box, behind the box, and potentially even would affect this one bolt here. So that's a big problem. Uh, that almost excludes this approach for my vehicle with this box location. Now, of course, I could relocate the box, right? This is not an issue, but then, then we're getting into even more modifications, right? Not even that we're drilling through the body, but we're now moving the box around. So, yeah, um, I don't know which approach I would take. Um, Having seen what's involved uh, to do the job from underneath the car, this looks very attractive now, but the box location is almost a no-go. I hope this was helpful. I know that it ended up being very long, but if you stuck uh, with me this long, I really uh, am really grateful. I'm really thankful. I hope that uh, you got good information out of this. Best of luck in all your projects um, and see you again in the next video. Take care.